Hey archers, thanks for tuning in. Sorry it took so long to get this video to you. It's been kind of a crazy week, but I wanted to make sure I got the right information to you about the 2019 Lancaster Classic. So let's dive in. I went ahead and made a list of some of the topics and things I wanted to cover. So hopefully I don't skip over anything. And if I don't answer something that you have a question about, shoot me a line, comment down at the bottom and uh, let me know and I'll be happy to get back to you just as quick as I can. So diving right in. Uh, the Lancaster Classic is held at the Spooky, Spooky Nook, excuse me, Spooky Nook uh, Sports Center up in Pennsylvania. And it is an enormous place, fantastic venue uh, for this event. Uh, when you arrive, there's two areas for parking. There's parking out in the front, uh, which is for members primarily, and then they do have some parking that's open for, uh, for us shooters when we go there for the event. Uh, if you get there a little bit later or you're not shooting early right off, there's parking in the back. It's a little further of a walk, but still doable and manageable. Um, the lodging. So there's a hotel attached to the Spooky Nook facilities, and it's called the Warehouse Hotel. Uh, this place, like I said, is, is huge. So if you're going to go to this event, and I suggest that you do, um, I would recommend going ahead and booking early and going ahead and booking a hotel room right there at the Warehouse Hotel, which is attached to the facility, so you can leave your, your case, your bow case, and other belongings up in the room that you don't need while you're down there on the range doing your competition. Uh, let's see. So the Spooky Note facility is... Literally, it's huge. So uh, there's a, a area for soccer, field hockey, basketball, volleyball. Uh, they even had an area outside that was set up in a separate tent for indoor um, lacrosse and also some indoor softball, which I thought was kind of odd, but really cool. Um, but it's a huge facility. So when you get there on day one, uh, you're going to roll in. Uh, you're going to walk through the entry area. And then you're going to go ahead and walk yourself on up to registration. And at registration, that's where you go ahead and get set up and they, they hand you your scorecard. Uh, they give you your quiver tag, which you hook on your quiver. And uh, there's an area down here marked for practice if you want to ahead and purchase some practice time ahead of time. And you keep that with you at all times so that they know that you're a competitor. Um, and then they also give you a name tag that you stick up there with your target down there at the range. Uh, and they also give you a scorecard which I obviously don't have because I had to turn it in for my scores. Um, along with registration, now at the time of registration, you're going to go ahead and roll in and they give you what they call their swag bag. And with their swag bag, one of the things that's in there is this pocket guide. And this pocket guide was super handy because it allowed me to have a map of the facility on the front. But as the weekend kind of played out, on the inside there's a nice schedule uh, that gives you times for each of the events that are occurring. So uh, as the, the weekend's going along and there's something you want to go check out or you want to see something happening or you're participating in something, this schedule's going to help get you where you got to go at the right times and the right places. Um, additionally, inside of here is also some format rules and, and things of that nature about how the Lancaster Classic actually operates. So really handy guide, great tool, came in handy. They also give you a nice little ball cap, Lancaster Archery ball cap. Nice stuff. Get you some stickers to stick on your, your gear, your cases, and things of that nature, if you like that kind of thing. Uh, maybe your back windshield if you're an avid shooter and you really want to support uh, Lancaster Archery Supply. No Lancaster Classic event will be complete without, of course, their catalog. Uh, it's their event, so I totally support the fact that they put their catalog in there. And honestly, it's a great tool uh, if you want to go ahead and you see something on somebody else's gear and you want to check out and see, well, what are they using and how much does it cost? They also give you a nice calendar, uh, yearly calendar. This is really kind of a nice little add-on item here. Uh, it's got some, some nice little pictures in here of different gear and things of that nature. Um, if you need something at your desk at work, nice to have. Since the Classic is held during the winter months, it's in January, they give you some, uh, some chapstick, branded by Lancaster. Not bad. It's cold, your lips get chapped, Here's a little chapstick. Nice silicone bracelet, Lancaster Archery. Scoring, you need a pen. Well, 
Lancaster comes in handy by giving you a nice pen to keep your scores with. And last but not least, nice little lanyard. It's got a nice little clip on the end, black lanyard. It's not a breakaway, so try not to hurt yourself. So that's it for the swag bag. Um, and on day one, uh, after you register and you get all set up, you can go ahead and roll on over and unpack your gear and get ready to shoot. So, so Friday is all about qualification. And if you make the top 32, then you shoot on Saturday. And they take the 32 that shoot on Saturday and trim them all the way down to four. And then those four shoot the finals on Sunday, which is a one-to-one -one competition, right? So two guys pair off or two gals pair off and get up there and, uh, and shoot it out at the end. So, uh, so day one is all about qualification. Uh, when you go in there, you unload your gear, uh, they have a bow storage room, which is kind of cool. So you go in, unload your stuff out of your case, set up your gear, take the bow case into the bow storage room, and there's an attendant in there who will uh, hook you up with a tag to stick on your case and your gear, uh, and you keep the other tag with you. So it's kind of like a valet, like a car valet. When you're, when you're done, you go in, uh, they got to make sure that your tag matches your gear, when you're done so that you're rolling out with your stuff and somebody else isn't rolling out with your stuff or you didn't pick up somebody else's by accident. Um, so that's kind of a nice little feature that they provide for you there. Um, right, out, right after you get set up and you store all your stuff, there's two practice areas. One was downstairs and one was upstairs. Uh, it was really kind of fantastic to be able to kind of roll in, uh, get some practice in, get warmed up before you actually go out onto the range and shoot your ends. Uh, there's two official ends of practice when you're on the range for the competition. But beforehand, you might want to have some gear issues that you got to work out or some just, just warm up the muscles and get out there and fire off a couple of arrows. It's a great idea. It's a great thing that they put on for you there. Um, on your first day, you're going to see a ton of vendor booths as well as a ton of people shooting on two different ranges. Um, don't get overwhelmed by the vendor booths that are out there. You're going to see Easton. You're going to see Trueball and Excel. You're going to see Biter, you're going to see Shrewd, you're going to see some of the other guys who uh, have some, some cool stuff that are for compound archers. Not my thing, I shoot recurve, right? So don't get overwhelmed by it. Um, if you're staying for the whole weekend, there's plenty of time to see that stuff. So my recommendation is don't worry about seeing the vendors or going to visit the vendors on the first day. Take care of that on the second day, on day two. Um, so day one, you're qualifying. There's two big ranges that they shoot on. There's the green range, which is where I shot. There were 78 lanes on that green range. And there was the blue range, which had about six, it had 67 lanes on the blue range. And there were four shooters on each lane. So if you do the math, it's 135 lanes and I don't remember how many shooters. You can do that math, four times 135, and that's what you get for how many people were shooting at that given time. It was a cool event. It was a great day to shoot. Um, and they have music playing in the background. Uh, lots of great people. I uh, made some good acquaintances while I was there. The people I was shooting with was friendly, so I had a bare bow shooter on my, my lane. I had a lady shooting recurve. So it, it's a good mix. It's a, it's a pretty cool thing that they have set up there and the way that it all goes down. Um, so one last thing I want to kind of leave here with on, on day one is shooting etiquette. So something that I think is uh, really kind of funny to talk about is, uh, and remind everyone about really, is shooting etiquette. Um, there was a gentleman who was shooting right next to me, a young man, who was shooting on lane 117. I was on lane 118. He had really long arrows and a very short quiver. And uh, every time he turned around to get ready to go ahead and start shooting, his arrows would be directly behind him and right in front of me and actually in my lane. So, um, so I, I took the opportunity at the seventh end, after he'd been doing this seven times, to you know, shake his arrows and remind him, hey, your arrows are right here with me, and, uh, and you know, could you knock them out of the way so I could go ahead and do my thing? So it's something to remember, keep in mind when you're up there shooting, right? A little shooting etiquette. Make sure your bow is still up and straight up and down in front of where you're shooting. Uh, you're not twisting it sideways, bleeding into anybody else's lane, and you know, watch your, your gear, your arrows. And, uh, make sure they're not poking whoever's behind you, uh, and they're off to the side a bit. So a good piece of advice there. Um, and then finally, uh, on day one, what, one of the thoughts I had was just scoring. I mean, there were so many people, and it was really, really, really cool. Uh, you know, along with the music they had playing in the background, they had tons of judges. And if you had questions about any scoring 
uh, or if you had any equipment malfunctions or anything of that nature, there was always somebody there to help you out. And there was super friendly staff, uh, really great people and easy to get along with. So, so day one, all qualification. If you made the top 32, that moves you over to day two. So day two was really cool. Um, I rolled in, me and the wife, we rolled in early to go ahead and watch and see what these guys were doing. So uh, I had the opportunity to go hang out where they were shooting the men's recurve. We had some breakfast while we were there and, uh, and just watching these young guys shoot uh, and, and older guys even. There were some older folks there uh, who have been shooting for years uh, and getting up there and they're in the top 16 shooters uh, for what was happening there that day. So for the 32, they trim down, they shoot number one against number 32, number two against number 31, number three against number 30, and so on and so forth. And they pair it all the way down and keep eliminating folks until they get down to the final four, which are the four that shoot in the shoot off on Sunday. So I got to watch guys like uh, Crispin Duenas uh, get up there and, and shoot and just watch what he's doing, watch his technique, and just really watch uh, how he performs. Uh, I was able to watch Brady Ellison uh, get up there and do his thing and just see, uh, you know, what it was that made him uh, such a fantastic archer and, and, a, and a great competitor in the Olympics. Uh, and then Jack Williams. Jack Williams is a young guy who looks like he's up and coming uh, and shot super well uh, and did fantastic on day two. Uh, so it was really, really cool to see these four guys, or, or a bunch, I should say, shouldn't say four, uh, a bunch of guys uh, shooting the men's recurve and then pair down to the final four, which were Brady Ellison, Jack Williams, uh, Michelle Frangili, and Crispin Duenas. Uh, those guys were all fantastic, and it was really cool to see them shoot. So that was good stuff. Uh, so day two, not only do you get to watch a pro shoot and maybe get something out of that and take something from it, um, but that's the day to go visit the vendors, right? So after the, the folks shoot that you want to see and you're done doing that stuff, that's the time to go check out the vendors. Uh, take your time, walk through, ask some questions. Uh, I had the opportunity to talk to some of the shrewd guys about their stabilizer systems and some of the weights that they use on their system. Um, you know, some of, the, some of their weights are stainless steel, some are tungsten, and I wanted to understand the differences and the different weight balances that they use, four ounces versus two ounces versus one half ounce, and even some of the one ounce discs that they have there, right? So I wanted to get a little better understanding about their weight systems and how the weights work. So uh, when I need to uh, maneuver things around in my stabilization system, I, I know what I'm looking at when I look at their weights. Um, after uh, you've met the vendors and after everybody's done shooting, they have something called Meet the Pros. And that's where they set up uh, the pro booths Basically, and this year it was out in the atrium area next to where you're registered. And you had all these pros get out there who have shot in the Olympics or they're shooting on a professional team like Hoyt uh, or, uh, or Matthews for any of their compound stuff. And you, you get in line, you get up there, you can talk to these folks for a few, you can get their autographs on some you know, pictures of theirs or if you have something you want them to autograph, like a target or something of that nature. Uh, it's a great opportunity for that. I was fortunate enough to be able to jump in line uh, Brady Ellison was there. He's one of the guys I really look up to from an archery perspective. He's been doing this for a long time, and uh, I really appreciate his, his attitude towards archery and, uh, and towards new guys like me who are getting into the field and, uh, and had an opportunity to kind of chat with him for a little bit, uh, get my picture taken with him, and uh, it, it, was, it was a really cool experience. Um, and then finally on day two, after you've done all that stuff, go have some fun, right? So me and the wife, since we were there for the weekend, uh, we went and we caught a movie on Saturday, and then we went out to dinner, uh, and then got some shut-eye, and then came back for Sunday to watch the shoot-offs on the, the finals. So that takes us into Sunday. Uh, Sunday was really cool. Uh, the shoot-off area where they do this thing is set up really, really well. Uh, the shoot-off lanes are in the middle of the room, and it's just two stages, two bales that these guys are shooting at, or girls, I'm sorry, um, depending upon which class it is. Uh, and then there's spectators on both sides of those lanes. And there's cameras all over the place. The thing was being streamed live on the internet. Lancasters uh, folks were up there and doing interviews as the shooting was going on. So it was really cool. It was a really cool event to go watch and see. Um, I, we got there at the end of the women's recurve and, uh, and got to watch the men's recurve go down. And that was really cool. Uh, it was neat to see the, the pairing off of the four gentlemen get up there and do their thing. Uh, there's seating in that area, but there's also plenty of standing room. So uh, as different events end and the next one takes over, some people get up and leave because they're done watching what they're watching. And then there's seats that free up so you can go ahead and grab a seat and, and, uh, and sit down and relax for a few. 
while you're watching your stuff. Um, so I watched the four men's recurve, right? So Jack Williams went up against Michelle Frangilli to start off, and Jack Williams uh, took that round and uh, eliminated Michelle. Uh, and then Crispin Duenas comes out, and Crispin Duenas was really cool. Uh, he made a really cool comment. He said he's the only guy up there who's competing in the finals with skinny arrows. And uh, if you've been shooting for any period of time, uh, any indoor stuff, you understand the difference between skinny arrows and fat arrows and <laughs> what that can mean for your scores. So he said that. It was, it was funny uh, just to hear him say that, but it's true. He was the only guy up there with skinny arrows in the finals. Uh, Jack Williams did defeat Crispin uh, during that second round. And then the third and final round uh, of those four guys was Jack against Brady Ellison. And uh, what, a, what a fantastic match off that was, or pair off that was. And, uh, and Jack Williams ended up taking the top seat in there, and Brady took second. So it was really cool to see uh, this whole thing go down and, and just really enjoy the experience. So uh, after that ended, the men's recurve was done. Uh, we went ahead and packed up our stuff and headed out, and uh, I was home by 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday. So a great weekend overall, and if you haven't been there, uh, I totally recommend that you go ahead and, and check out the Lancaster Classic in 2020. Um, so a couple of tips uh, that I'd like to leave you with of things that, that uh, I think helped me out or that I took notice of are, uh, you know, what did I get out of the event? Uh, what, I got, what I got out of the event was uh, it was my first time shooting in a very large scale event like that. Uh, so it was great to meet other people and have the opportunity to watch some really high end shooters and take a little something away from that and learn a little bit from that. Um, it was, uh, it was exciting. That's, that's face it, right? Shooting is fun, but when you're in an environment with a whole bunch of other people who are doing the same thing that you're doing because they all do it for the love of doing it, uh, it's an exciting place to be. And it's really cool. Uh, Find time to learn something. Uh, talk to the people who you're shooting with, or at the end, if you have some opportunity to go talk to some of the pros, ask them questions. Um, you know, they're, they're happy to answer any questions you might have. A um, couple final thoughts. Uh, food. So the food at the venue is, it's okay. But if fast food isn't your thing, definitely bring some snacks along with you uh, because the food there is more of the fast food type of thing. And if you want something a little bit healthier or something that's not necessarily of the fried variety or something of that nature, uh, bring something with you. You're going to want to do that. Um, and then last but not least, book early, uh, especially if you're going to stay at the warehouse hotel there attached to the facility. Book your room early, book your seat early for the time that you want to shoot on Friday, uh, and then get up there and go have some fun. So that's really, I guess, about it. If you got any questions, please pop them down in the comments. Uh, if there's something I missed or didn't go over that you might want to know about, let me know. Um, I'm happy to either repost a new video or answer your question via the comments. And uh, as always, please click like. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you next time. Keep on shooting.